Well, good morning to everyone, uh, or good evening, maybe. The, first of all, thanks to the organizers of this event for the invitation and for the project. Thanks for inviting our research group and made it possible to present our results. The topic is detection and management of lethal yellowing disease in Mexico. And this presentation is in Spanish, as you have probably perceived. So different participants of this study in Mexico are three groups, the Colegio de Postgraduados in Tabasco, Ecoproductores, or ECO-TH, producers from the state of Guerrero, and CZ uh, located in Yucatan. And furthermore, in the Tropic Safe projects are other research teams in the Caribbean and Africa working on the same topic. The contents will be first an introduction, then the results of the project. Topics are phytoplasma detection in insects and plants, management of ALC and protocol for detection, and finally conclusions. Well, regarding the introduction, uh, in Mexico, uh, you see here in green is where the coconut tree is cropped, the states where they grow it, and the surface is around 100,000 hectares. It used to be almost double, but due to different causes and diseases, then we have lost a great part of the surface. But that was decades ago. Nowadays, the situation of coconut tree is very pleasant. Markets are growing very much, but the production of nuts is decreasing due to uh, illnesses, diseases, and other causes. One of them is the lethal yellowing, the YLC, and other similar uh, illnesses. These are caused by phytoplasm, which inhabit the phloem of the tissues of the plants transmitted by insects which suck the phloem. We have ALC in Mexico. So what you see in yellow, the lighter yellow is 100 times less incidence than the, um, the more pronounced yellow. It's the Gulf of Mexico, the greatest incidence, and in the peninsula it has decreased due to the use of resistance materials. What was the strategy defined 20 years ago to face this illness and uh, disease in Mexico? First, the different topics were to study the ALC to understand it better, develop tools for research and practical uh, implementation for detection, also to look for germoplasm of the resistant coconut, and also develop protocols to for detection and uh, propagation. This is a study of resistance in the Pacific, and we found resistant materials to this lethal uh, disease. We also had uh, some studies from Jamaica, and with also positive results, and we followed their example. We followed suit. Now I'm going to show some uh, of the results of the projects of the project from Tropic Safe, regarding the detection of phytoplasms in plants. We have here the map. You see in red the the areas where we gathered uh, samples, and he, in this table, I just say that there are 12 species of. Uh, coconut palms, where we found positive results to type of uh, plants. And maybe half of the species uh, have already phytoplasms from the 16th group. And we found also a subgroup for most of the species. Mainly, we found the subgroup a and D. These are the most abundant in Mexico. Mainly A is in the coconut tree. B we have not found yet. And D is in many other species. Here you can see some pictures of symptoms of different species. More pictures. I'm not going to go into detail. 
And here you can see other pictures of insects that we found that could be interesting. In the table, we show four of them. In Yucatan, we found Colpoptera. In Tabasco, Aplaxius crudus, Scarpion, and also Aplaxius caltueli. These had not been reported as vectors. And also Aplaxius crudus, it has been reported as vector in Florida. We found positive detection in all of them, and we identified the subgroup in all cases being A. We are doing transmission tests in Tabasco with the plant A, A Merili, and in Yucatan with the coconut palm tree within closed uh, containers with controlled conditions and also the insects. And in the case of Tabasco, they also finished their test and found positive detection with Laxus crudus. In Yucatan, we're testing Cocobliter, but um, we're still on the way. Regarding the management of ALC, uh, we're trying to find uh, an assessment of resistance of ALC in the field. We've tested different materials. And here I show a table uh, of different places where we're doing a uh, monitoring because we have materials of interest. In, but those with the uh, orange color are citrus where also places where we have tested with, uh, with the project of Tropic Safe. Here you see some pictures, one of the essays in Tabasco and another one in Yucatan. Up to now, in all these places, from all these places, we only found losses by lethal yellowing. In Tikul, three plants died, around 0.5% uh, of the palms in the site. But for the next two years, nothing else happened. In all sites we have tested, we find plants with symptoms uh, that die, but not within the populations of interest. Here's a map where we find uh, different sites, different places, two in the Gulf and uh, other two in the Pacific. And in yellow, we find the tests of Tropic Safe. Next topic, next pictures to show an activity we're doing related to this, where materials that we had identified before as resistant are micro-propagating. And we can see here a lot prepared in A and was sent to Cuba, another one to Jamaica. Plants arrived there. Here's Mary, part of the group in Cuba, just working on the climatization, the plants. Uh, here in the field, we have the plants micropropagated, already growing. Finally, protocol in order to detect and identify phytoplasms. Typically, the protocol that we use is the Harrison protocol, which is very useful, not only for detection, but also to have genetic material for identification of groups and subgroups. Well, it's not being very useful, but because it takes a lot of time, depending on the steps, it, it's also very costful. So we developed another protocol in, based in real time and also with Tagman uh, probes. And it allows in one single tube to identify phytoplasms of subgroup A or D, which are the most common in Mexico throughout different uh, signals, having different signals at the same time, depending on whether it interacts with A or D, we can identify it. And this methodology allows us to identify whether we have A or D in the same tube. We're seeing it on the screen, right? Here are some results of this method. Here you can see in, in red, positive detection with coconut, we have positive detection with a probe detecting A and negative with a probe detecting D. That's, that was expected. In the case of Phoenix caridensis, it's the other way around, also expected. And in this column, we find the identification of A or D. And with 
Uh, here are samples that were sequenced and the result was confirmed. On the bottom part, we have the same but non-sequenced uh, samples. As conclusions, I could say that the project has allowed us to know more on ALC in Mexico around host, alternative hosts, potential vectors, and also develop a practical methodology for detection and to assess uh, sur um, survival of ALC in the coconut of interest. This is very useful information to improve our capability to manage ALC in Mexico and other countries. Something important is that the working group includes producers and researchers that collaborate in order to get results that allow us to face ALC in Mexico and other countries. This collaboration is growing beyond the uh, scope of this project. So thank you very much. And I wanted to uh, thank especially uh, Asunta for having invited us to this project. Thank you very much.